What are the three most important things you need to know when you start driving? How to start the car. That's helpful. How to accelerate. That's how to brake. Yeah, you need to know the differences. That's important. Driver's license, you need to know to have a drive, yeah. You need to have a car. You need to have a car. Yeah. Addy. You need, that's helpful, absolutely. Yes, Kate. No texting. No texting, come on. Oh, yes. Oh. Okay. Turn the turn signal, yep. Cool. Not hit people. What? That's not true. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, check your mirror's blind spot. No, your favorite radio station. That's helpful. Last one. Mr. White. Watch where you're going. All those are super good. So you guys are not driving yet. But. But you will be driving soon. So a lot of the things, a lot of the things you guys said, a lot of things you guys said are really important. One thing you didn't say that is really important to learn is how to change a tire. Oh. So here's the deal. Guys, I got a story for you I want to share. I got a story for you I want to share, but I'm only going to share if you're blind. Thank you. So when I was getting my license, my mom taught me how to change a tire. And it's because my dad's a banker. He doesn't do things like that. So my mom taught me how to change a tire. And so I was, I was driving with my buddy Steve. And my buddy Steve uh, did not know how to change a tire, which was an issue because he blew out a tire as we were driving, which was perfect. So I was like, about to show my friend up. I'm like, hey, dude, I got this. Don't worry. So I get the jack out. You guys probably seen someone do that. You put it underneath the car. You start spinning the wheel. Starts going up. Car gets up off, and you start taking the tire off. So you have to get there's what's called lug nuts that hold the tire in. This is a life lesson for you. This you didn't even pay for this. You're welcome. This is for free. <laughs> so you have to get the you have to get the lug nuts off to get the tire off. So we got three out. The problem is there was four. And we started trying to get this fourth one out, and it wouldn't move. It wouldn't budge. And we're about, I'm 6'3", he's also 6'2". We're both pretty skinny. It's not that heavy, but we're, like, jumping on it, like, <laughs> trying to get the thing to move. And nothing's happening. I, like, literally nothing's happening. So we're like, wow. I mean, I, okay, there's a tire shop not that far, so we just put the lug nuts back on, and we drove, like, six miles an hour because its tire was flat. So it's just like, put them, put them, all the way to the tire shop. And then we get there, we're like, hey, like we have a spare tire, we couldn't get this, this thing off. And he's like, oh, it's because you're missing this. Can you guys ever seen what this is before? Yes, it's like a thing. So a lot of cars have one lug nut that needs a special key so your tire doesn't get stolen. And we didn't know that. So we were just sitting there working on it, not having the right tools to fix the tire. And as we're continuing this series called Rewired, talking about anxiety and depression, anxiousness and hopelessness, I think oftentimes we think those issues are kind of like Steve and I, toolless, not able to get the tire off. But thankfully, it's not the case. God doesn't leave us out there, just out there on the street trying to get a tire off without the things to do it. God gives us tools to fight back and the struggle of anxiousness and hopelessness. So today we're going to talk about how God gives us the ability to, one, define reality, define reality, and two, change our thoughts. And I know probably for some of you, as we've been in the series, you're like, I don't have anxiety and depression. Why do I need to listen to this? Um, what I will say is that, and, and that's, that's true, not every single person has anxiety and depression. Those are, those are things that are diagnosed, um, but, but some of us some of us do, and that's okay. Like said, we said last week, there's no shame in that, but we've all experienced two things called anxiousness and hopelessness. Anxiousness is that feeling that a heart beating really quick, you have a test coming up, or you have a tryout, or you need to talk to someone, or you walk into a social environment where you don't know anyone, and your heart starts beating really, really fast, and you don't know why and sometimes that can last 
for like a period of time, it can turn into seasonal anxiety. So that's anxiousness. And we've all experienced that or will all experience that. And then the other thing is hopelessness. We've, you have or you will experience a time where you're like, I don't know why things matter. I don't know why this matters. And what happens oftentimes today in 2019 is instead of actually dealing with that, we just go to YouTube and we just watch YouTube for hours on end. Or we go to our video games and we play our video games for hours on end. Or we go to Netflix and just watch that for hours on end. We, we zone out, we stop thinking, and really it's a sign of your of potentially seasonal depression or this feeling of hopelessness where you don't know if anything matters. So all those things are, are, are feelings that you have had or will have in your life, and that's why this conversation matters. And then some, and then for some of you, anxiety and depression is real, and, and this will be helpful for you too. And for some of you, you will have friends that will experience that, and you'll be able to help them figure out the tools and things that they can do to help them as well. So that's why we're in this series. And today we're gonna to be looking at a passage in Philippians 4, and I'm gonna start with Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonable, reasonableness, it's a hard word, be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The first thing we can do to help is define what's real. See, sometimes we can get freaked out or worry, or get hopeless about something that's not even real, or not even what's the most real in life. And I'm going to give you an example of that. How many of you got money from the tooth fairy when you lost your tooth? So if you, if you had that happen, you lose a tooth, and your parents are like, hey, don't worry. Put that money under, put that tooth under your pillow, and a fairy's going to come at night and take that tooth and give you money. And you may have woken up and you might get a dollar or five dollars or a quarter. And it's, it's good, it's good because losing a tooth is kind of scary. Hey guys, I don't mean, I know you're distracted by the, the tooth fairy on the screen. It's good because, because uh, losing a tooth is scary and it helps with that process. But eventually you get old and you realize, Oh, is a man in a costume is going to come in my room and take my tooth from underneath my pillow? That's weird. And it starts to provide anxiousness. And then your parents eventually relent and tell you it's not true, which helps. So we can get freaked out about things that aren't even real. And the, the tooth fairy is funny. Let's switch off of that so we don't have that guy up there anymore. Thank you. That was me. And so when Paul tells us in this passage, hey, do not be anxious, it can be easy, like, oh, Paul, I mean, don't be anxious, that's easy to say. But what Paul isn't saying is, like, there's not things in life to be anxious about. That's, that's obvious, there's, there's things to be anxious about. What Paul is saying is that the things about God that are true are more real than what we can be anxious about in our lives. And Paul is saying, I'm going to focus on God more than on the things that make me anxious the things in, in school that may make you anxious aren't as real as, of, aren't as real as what God thinks about you. Your relationship that maybe is causing a lot of anxiousness or hopelessness isn't as real as God's relationship with you. And also in the grand scheme of your life, it's a small portion of your life. So that's what it means to define what's real. The second tool that God gives us the thing that we can learn from this passage is in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lo lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. You have power over your thoughts. Repeat that. You have power over your thoughts. I'm going to prove it to you. Everyone close your eyes. I want you to think of a tiger. Now, think of that tiger puppy-sized. It's kind of cute, huh? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. It's not, it's not going to be cute for long. Now think of that tiger with a monkey face and a pigtail. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, 
make that monkey faced tiger with a pigtail hat be pink with purple polka dots. Hey! It's weird, huh? You guys have some weird images in your head? Look at me. None of you have ever seen that before. None of you have ever seen that before. Your mind, hey guys, it's really important. Shh. Your mind just made something up in, in your head based on things that you've seen before and combined them together. That's how powerful your mind is. And you can do that with so many different things. You can imagine like having a milkshake on the top of the mountain in Colorado that you've been to with Justin Bieber. Just me, just me. Hey, guys, this is really important. Your mind is powerful and that is both good and bad. And you also have the power to change your thoughts. You have the power to change actually what you're thinking about. You can choose to focus on things that are true, that are helpful, that are real, that are good, that are righteous, or you can choose to focus on things that aren't that, that are unhelpful, that are untrue. And you're not a slave to your thoughts. You're not a slave to your mind. You have power over your mind. Lastly, we're going to look, look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, What you have learned and received and heard and seen, me, seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. You learn from this verse, practice. You guys are in activities and sports and band and school. You have to practice to be good at things. You're not going to leave here today and be awesome at, at having power over your thoughts and defining what's real. Neither am I. Paul is writing this to adult Christians in Philippi. They still get anxious. They still need to work on defining what's real in their life. They still need to figure out how to focus on things that are helpful. You guys are going to, too. This goes into what we've been talking about. There's no shame in anxiety. There's no shame in depression. There's no shame in anxiousness. There's no shame in hopelessness. People at all stages of life are working through those things, and Christians at all stages of life are working through those things. So we want to help you to find what is real in your life, to focus what is real in your life, and we've come up with a little bit of a, a tool to help with that. It's an acronym called REAL. Wow. You can write... You can write this down, but we also, we also made uh, cards for each of you as you leave. R, relax. E, engage your mind. A, ask for help. L, look through God's eyes. So this is a way to help your thoughts, to help what you're thinking about, to help in the battle with anxiousness and hopelessness. R, relax. Sleep. That's so important for re relaxation. Do you guys know that you have to have sleep? As teenagers, like literally your whole life you need sleep, but there's no more important time in your life than from the time of zero until 18 to sleep. So I'm going to tell you something that your parents have probably told you, but I'm telling you, and it's 100% real, you need to leave your phone outside of your room when you sleep. Oh, it's my alarm clock. There's things called alarm clocks that you can buy. Oh my gosh. No, I will buy, we will buy you alarm clocks because your phone in your room is taking away from your sleep and that only adds to anxiousness and, and hopelessness. That only adds anxiety and depression. Every single scientific study will tell you that. Also, shh, guys, guys, shh. Also, relaxation, breathing techniques. Taking deep breaths in, taking deep breaths out. There's something called a 3-3-3 breath. You breathe in for three seconds, you hold for three seconds, you breathe out for three seconds. You can spend time, put a timer on your phone, three to five minutes, so you just spend time in silence. All those things are really important for relaxation. E, engage your mind. As you're thinking something, think, is this helpful? If it's not helpful, changing 
your thoughts. Something I do when I want to change my thoughts is I tap my side. You can clasp your hands. You can do push-ups. All things that divert your mind to something else. And also focusing on what you're putting into your mind because that changes what you think about. A, ask for help. Family, church, mentors, friends, community, all these people that are there to support you, school administrators, counselors, all those people are there for you. Then L, look through God's eyes. This is the most important one. Spending time in scripture, scripture memorization and prayer. Remind yourself how God actually thinks and feels about you. So we're going to give you guys, give you those things on the way out. Um, God doesn't leave you without tools as we are walking through life, as we're battling anxiousness and hopelessness. Uh, before you guys leave here, um, leaders, can you guys pass out those surveys? So I don't think middle school got this last week. We're going to ask you guys to do a survey for me, um, which will help us.